All right, now moving forward, so now we have to express the same concepts in the form of math. So this is hot mathematical modeling. <clears throat> All right, this thing is going to fly. So just sit back and pay attention to the terminology at this point. All right, so M is our, our mass. So the mass is the one that gets displaced in space as well as in time. All right, so it gets displaced in the forward direction along the x direction. So this is your displacement. This is your time, so it's going to get displaced in time. So there's a displacement in space as well as there's displacement in time. So m is your mass, x is going to be the distance, t is going to be our time. Time is going to be expressed in terms of seconds. Distance is going to be expressed in terms of meters, and mass is going to be expressed in terms of kilometers. All right, just in case, in case you've never seen this stuff before, all right, going to write these out. So k, kg is going to be kilograms, m is meters, and s is going to be seconds. All right, we will be using the standard international unit system which means that we're using the metric system in describing motion. All right, so M, K, S means something. M means meters, K is gonna be kilograms, and S is gonna be seconds. All right, notice that X means distance. All right, so motion is described in terms of displacement of mass in space and time. I say displacement, and then sometimes we talk about distance. Distance and displacement, they don't mean the same thing in physics. So let's talk about the meaning of this. Distance is the total path traveled. Displacement is the shortest distance between two points. Where the final position is going to be denoted by an arrow. All right, so let's just let's expand on the definitions. All right, so imagine that you're rich enough, living in Chicago, and somehow you have an expensive boat. So it's Sunday. You take your family and friends out to uh, out into Lake Michigan, and you travel about 100 miles. Now on the way back, the engine breaks down. All right, so you you need help. You call the Coast Guard. All right, and then the Coast Guard, what information do they need from you in order to actually come to your rescue? Does it matter that you traveled 100 miles or the fact that you've been uh, in the lake for about four hours? Is that information in any way relevant to your rescue? Uh, no, I think they would need their, your coordinates, right? Yeah, absolutely. They, they want to know your location on a map, right? You just have five points for that one. So they want your location on a map. So the distance traveled, notice that this is the total path traveled. That's not relevant to them. What they want is they want your location on a map, all right? So the information that they would require is, where are you on a map? All right, so they want your displacement. So the displacement is your location on a map. All right, notice that the displacement is going to have the shortest distance between two points. So this is where they are, and this is where you are on a map. And the final location is indicated as an arrow. It just so happens that you're 30 miles in this direction. It's in uh, northeasterly direction. And they would have an angle and all that stuff. All right, so the displacement is, is known as a position vector. It locates you on a map. All right, so the total distance traveled, total path traveled is your distance. Displacement is your location on a map. It's known as a position vector. Okay, speaking of vector, now we have to add two more definitions. Vector versus a scalar. Okay, so there are two different uh, parameters that we deal with in physics. We deal with scalars as well as vectors. Scalar is just a number. Anything that is magnitude is known as a scalar. Anything that has magnitude only is known as a scalar. Time is a scalar. Pressure is a scalar. Weight is a scalar. Speed is a scalar. Temperature is a scalar. Notice that all of them are numbers. Now, vectors are things which are combinations of magnitudes and directions. All right, so we are dealing with a vector. The vectors will have combinations of uh, magnitude as well as direction. Force is an example. All right, I can push out something in this direction. I can pull on it in the opposite direction. Notice that as soon as direction is involved, it turns into a vector. Acceleration is a vector. You can speed up in this direction and you can slow down in the opposite direction. Velocity is a vector. Speed is how fast. Velocity is also which direction. If I'm going at 60 miles per hour, I'm talking about speed. If I'm talking about 60 miles per hour, moving up north, I'm talking about velocity. All right, so distance versus displacement. Distance is the total path traveled, and displacement is the shortest distance between two points. And final location indicated is an arrow. All right, so last year, I currently live in Chicago, obviously. I didn't get a chance to go to Texas yet. Uh, last year I was in California for a full-time temporary gig. So I decided to take about two weeks of the Andrew Iran all the way down to California. All right, so this was my total path travel. All right, my location in California with respect to Chicago is indicated by as a displacement vector, all right, position vector. All right, so starting point, the ending point. And the final location is indicated as an arrow. All right, so this is your displacement, the shortest path between two points. And this is the distance, the total path travel. All right, so Distance is the total path traveled. This is scalar. Displacement is the shortest distance between two points with your final location indicated as an arrow. 
All right, so the direction of motion is indicated as an angle. It's a vector. So you've got a scalar, you've got a vector. All right, so now going back. All right, so what's motion? Motion is a displacement of mass in space and in time. Measurable quantities in describing motion. You've got mass, you've got time. And what else? You've got displacement, which is space. How's time defined in physics? What's measured by a clock? All right, so now fill in the gaps. What's the proper unit for measuring time? All right, guys, you have to jump in at this moment. Would it be like seconds or minutes? All right, it's, seconds. it's seconds, right? Here's up two points. So the proper unit is going to be seconds. How's space defined in physics? What's measured by a measuring stick? What's the proper unit for measuring distance? Meters. Meters, very good. You're going to points. Mass is measure of inertia. What's the proper unit for mass? Kilograms. Kilograms, very good. Give yourself the points. All right, guys, for every single answer, give yourselves two points right now. Okay, so what does MKS stand for? And uh, all right, meters, meters, kilograms, and it's going to be seconds. Very good. Give yourself two points each. All right, the distance is? Uh, total, total distance traveled, right? All right, distance is the total path traveled. Very good. And displacement is? The shortest distance between the paths. Okay, Mark says the shortest distance between two points, absolutely, with the final location indicated as an arrow. So it's a displacement vector, so it is a vector. All right, scalar number of vector is a combination of a number as well as its direction. All right, so if you had to guess, what does speed mean to you guys? Excuse me, what does speed, speed mean to you guys? The distance that you travel in a certain amount of time. Okay, I, I love that. I'm going to give you five points for that one. So that's the distance that you travel in a certain amount of time. All right, that's actually beautiful. All right, so we talked about scalars, we talked about vectors. All right, let's move forward. Speed, formal definition. Formal definition of speed is how fast an object moves in space and in time. So how fast an object moves in space and in time. All right, so faster you go, the larger the distance we will, we will cover. So which means the speed is going to be directly proportional to displacement. All right, so faster you go, larger the space that you're going to be able to cover. And obviously, faster you go, the less time it's going to take you to cover that distance. All right, so speed and time are inversely related. All right, so this allows us to come up with a mathematical model for speed. So this is the displacement along the x direction. This is time. So how fast an object gets displaced in time and in space. So speed is going to be directly proportional to displacement, inversely proportional to time. So that becomes our formula. So x is distance, t is time. V, v means Speed and velocity. So V means velocity. We'll also use it for speed. So proper unit for distance, m meters. Time, seconds. Speed is, all right, so speed is going to be, x is going to be meters. Time is going to be seconds. So speed is going to be meters per seconds. In the United States, we use miles per hour. So which means that we have to use conversions. Here's the conversion factor. Here's the formula. All right, so let's go to the formula sheet at this point. All right, so let's go find the formula sheet. All right, so the formula sheet is located here at the very top. Uh, this is the formula we're focusing on today. And at the very bottom, you will have the conversions. All right, so top, this is the formula that we're looking at. So this is our speed formula. And then go all the way to the bottom. So here, you have the speed conversion, meters per second to miles per hour. So you will need this. Notice that you've got meters and feet. You've got miles and meters. So that's your distance conversion. So we will also need that for today. And one more thing we will need. Notice that we got the time here. One hour is 3,600 seconds. All right, so I want you to remember that one as well. All right, so these are the conversions we will get to use for today. All right. Okay, guys, I want you guys to use the chat at this point. So I just want this to go a little faster. All right. So use the chat feature and just put down your answer A, B, C, or whatever. So I have an idea. So I need at least five responses. All right, so I get two Cs, three Cs. All right, I need two more. Hmm. Beautiful, this was fast. Everybody got C. All right, so in, the, in terms of the MKS unit system, the correct answer is C. So it's going to be in terms of meters and seconds. Give yourselves two points. This was good. All right, this was awesome. All right, also, you can type in the chat whatever the comments you may have. Human being go without. That also helps. That I'm, that's, I'm going to consider that participation as well. All right, now let's settle the debate or at least attempt to settle the debate regarding Johnson versus Green. This is the fastest man on the planet. 
Michael Johnson, the world and Olympic 200 and 400 meter champion. Yes. The 1996 Atlanta Olympics 200 meter final. Johnson prepares himself for the race of his life. As I'm in the block, the only thing I can be thinking about at that moment is reacting to the gun. You know, I can't think about what I'm going to do you know, even 10 meters into the race or even two seconds into the race. I can't be thinking about that at that point because there's something more important. I've got to react to the gun. And you have to take the race phase by phase and focus on each particular thing as you get to it. Johnson smashed the world record at the time of 19.32 seconds. Very confident. At 26, Green has reason to be. His world record is 9.79 seconds. He's won the 100 under 10 seconds more than any man before him. All right, so the question is, who's faster? Johnson, who broke the world record in 200 meters by running 200 meters within 19.32 seconds, or is it Maurice Green who ran 100 meters within 9.79 seconds? Okay, so let's settle the debate. The first thing we will have to do is find the problem. Okay, so we want to do the problems section. All right, so the problem number one is the one that we're going to focus on. So that's he runs 200 meters within 19.32 seconds. So figure out his speed. That's what we'll have to do. The next thing you need to do is just open up the worksheet. You will need this worksheet. Okay, so whenever you guys do problems, uh, I want you to follow the worksheet because you will get to do problems in three steps. Those of you guys who have taken physics in high school, we're not going to repeat the same bad habits that you guys have picked up from high school. Okay, a lot of our work is going to be done symbolically. All right, so. We will stick to a pattern and the pattern is going to look like this. So today is more like a formatting thing. These problems are kind of straightforward. But the ice, these are like art school level problems. And then our problems are going to become a little bit more sophisticated. So what do we know? We've got Michael Johnson. He runs 200 meters. All right. So that 200 meters is going to be our distance. So that's your X. And then within 19.32 seconds. So that's T. So what we are doing is we will list everything first. All right. So X is going to be 200 meters. So that's our distance. T is 19.32 seconds. And V is our speed, and it's going to be in terms of meters per second. All right, so we are done with listing of everything. He runs 200 meters within 19.32 seconds, and we want to know how fast he's running. All right, so the next step is going to be algebra. When I say algebra, it doesn't mean algebra. It just my way of saying it's math that you have to do, and then we're talking about symbolic math. So you will have to start off with a formula always from the formula sheet. So distance, time, and speed are the symbols that we have. So pick the formula that has all those three symbols. In our case, it's, that's the only formula that we know anyway, so that's the one we will use. All right, and then you have to isolate the unknown. In this case, it's speed. It's already on the left-hand side, so it's isolated. The next step is just plug the numbers in, all right, metric units. All right, X is 200, T is gonna be 19.32, so that's it. And then number crunching at this point, so it's gonna give you 10.35, all right. If this were high school, you would have been fine. You would have just gone back to the book, checked the back of the book, checked to see if you have the right answer. If you did, you would stop. Wow. Except the problem with that approach is you're treating physics as if it's a math course. It doesn't work out that way. There's a reason why you do a problem with physics because you're curious about something. In this case, we're curious as to how fast this guy is running. All right, is he running at 10 miles per hour, 15, 20, 30, 50, what is it? I mean, we can relate to miles per hour, but not meters per second. So what we need to do is we need to convert this to something we understand. That's miles per hour. So we have to do one more conversion. So we have to take this speed. Hmm and then convert to miles per hour. All right, so you go from meters per second to miles per hour. All right, so the top, the 10 miles per hour is gonna multiply 2.24. Everything's gonna be divided by one. And now we get an answer. The answer is, this guy is actually running over 23 miles per hour. So Johnson, when he broke the world record, he was a little bit over 23 miles per hour. So we got, we got an understanding of it. Now, if you're driving at 23 miles per hour, it doesn't feel like you're going that fast. But running at that speed is a different story. All right, so let's move on to problem number two. All right, problem number two, we will do the same thing with Maurice Green. So this guy runs 100 meters within 9.79 seconds. All right, all right, so 100 meters within 9.79 seconds. And once again, we are listing everything. And at the end, we want to convert to speed to miles per hour. Algebra is the same, distance over time is going to be our speed. All right, now the numbers. All right, so plug the numbers in, do the number crunching, and then we want the answer in terms of miles per hour. I got his speed. All right, Johnson's speed is over 23. Green's speed is under 23. All right, so who's faster? Is it Johnson or is it Green? 